In this video, we are going to create our packet manager class and implement it for the server for when we are receiving incoming packets. First, let's create a new header file. We're going to call this packet manager. Let's take a look at what the class will look like for our packet manager class. We are going to have a packet manager task enumerator, and this is going to be replacing the packet task enumerator we had in our TCP connection. So if we go to our TCP connection, you see we have this packet task here. The packet manager task will replace that, and that's just going to be handled inside of the packet manager. Back in our packet manager, we are going to have a queue of shared pointers of our packets. The reason I chose to use shared pointers of packets instead of just the packet object directly is because this way, if we need to send the same packet to multiple clients, we can just pass in that shared pointer to all of the packet managers for those clients, and that way we won't have to allocate the packet multiple times. We're going to have a clear function for clearing out our queue, a function to check if we have pending packets in our queue, a function to append a packet to our queue, and then a way to retrieve a packet from the front of the queue, and a way to pop the packet to get the front packet out of the queue. The idea is when we're processing something for a packet, we'll use retrieve, and when we are done working with that packet, we will call pop to remove it from the packet manager's queue. You'll see in addition to storing the packet manager task, we are also going to be storing the current packet size as well as the current packet extraction offset. Because of this, we can go to our TCP connection header and we can remove where we had the task extraction offset as well as packet size stored here. These will all be a part of our packet manager now. Let's go ahead and add the packet manager to the TCP connection class while we're here. We're going to have a packet manager for handling incoming packets as well as a packet manager for handling outgoing packets. Our server is only currently able to receive data, so we'll only be touching the incoming packet manager for this video. But in the next video, we will look at sending data in which we will utilize the outgoing packet manager. Now, if we go back to our packet manager header, we still have to generate the CPP with all of these definitions. So let's go ahead and add a new CPP. We're going to call this packet manager.cpp. These functions are pretty basic. For when we clear out our queue, we're just setting our packets queue to be an empty queue of shared pointer packets. Uh, for has pending packets, we're just calling the empty function from our queue template. For append, we are just uh, pushing that packet into our queue. For retrieve, we are getting the packet from the front of the queue and returning it. And then for pop, we are just calling pop. Now let's take a look at what code we'll have to change. Let's go to our server CPP, and let's go to where we are uh, receiving data. And you'll see we will have to replace everywhere where we had connection.task with, uh, let's see, it'll be connection. We're going to look at the incoming uh, packet manager, and we're going to look at current task. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to do a replace. I'm going to replace connection.task with that. Hit replace all. So you replace three occurrences. Next we have to replace packet task process packet size. This is going to be packet manager task. So let's replace those. Next, uh, instead of accessing packet size directly, we are going to be using the packet manager's current packet size variable. So we'll do a replace for that. Next, uh, for the extraction offset, we're going to be using the extraction offset inside of our packet manager. And let's see. Let's go down and see that I'm sure there's something else we have to change as well. Okay, we still need to replace the process packet contents. Let's check if this builds. 
All right, so we've changed what we needed to get this to build. However, we're still not utilizing our packet manager. So what we're going to do is when we actually receive a packet, and you know we're building it right here, we are going to append it to our packet manager, and then we are going to process it later. So I'm going to take out where we are processing the packet right here. And instead, I'm going to say, for this connection, for the incoming packet manager, we're going to append that packet, and then we can process it later. Now you'll see a pin takes a shared pointer to a packet, and this isn't a shared pointer, so I need to change this to be a shared pointer. And then since this is a pointer now, we would just have to change these, I don't know what you call this, change the dots to arrows, so they're pointing, I don't know. Now that we are appending the packet to our packet manager, what we are going to do next is we are going to create a for loop after we are done sending and receiving data for this frame. And in the for loop, we will check if there are any uh, pending packets in the connections packet managers for the incoming data. We are just iterating through all the connections starting at the end and back towards the front. And the reason that we are going from back to front is because when we close a connection, that way it won't move any of the connections that we haven't processed in the vector of connections. For each connection, we're going to check if there's pending packets. If they are, we're going to get the front packet, attempt to process it, close the connection if we can't process it, and break to exit the while loop and go to the next connection. If we do successfully process that packet, we will remove it from the queue. Now you'll see process packet has an issue with taking in the front packet, and that's because it is a shared pointer to a packet, and process packet does not expect a shared pointer. So let's go ahead and update process packet to expect a shared pointer. And lastly, we'll have to update the declaration inside of our server class to also expect a shared pointer. Let's recompile this. Okay, and it succeeded. Let's give this a test. I'm going to run the server and then run the client. And it looks like it's working just fine. Before we end this video, I just want to go ahead and make sure that the connection is properly being closed when it receives an invalid packet. So we'll go to the client CPP and let's go to our packet type and numerator. And we are going to just add in a test packet type for this. And then back in our client CPP, what we will do is we will send the test packet randomly. When the server gets this packet, since it can't process it, it should return false on process packet and then it should close the client. So let's just test this and make sure that's working as expected. All right, looks like it is. It got two of the integer array packets and then it got the unrecognized uh, test packet and then it closed the connection. That concludes everything that we're going to cover in this video. In the next video, we are going to look at setting up the server to use the outgoing packet manager and to be able to send data because currently our server can only receive data. In order to test this properly, the client, we're going to change it so that the client is receiving data because currently the client is blocking and it's only able to send data. So if we want to be able to receive data and just keep this single threaded and not make a bunch of changes for right now, then we'll have to change this to receive. And then of course, once we have our server fully set up, we'll set up a non-blocking client class for the client to use.